So welcome to the third episode of Real Time Real Estate. I'm Sandra King. I'm Casey Lyons. And today with us we have Jesse Schroeder, who is the, oh God, I forgot. Moffitt County Weed Pest, Pest Manager. Thank you. I was trying to make you be the extension agent. <laughs> Would you like that one instead? No, I can't do both. <laughs> 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 and then Parker told me, I'm just going to throw him right under the bus, that you were not a Huskers fan because I told him I had all my clothes laid out, my earrings, I have my big Husker earrings, everything. And he's like, he's not a Huskers fan. I'm like, oh, he's not? <laughs> That's not true. Okay, I Parker. Husker fan. So yeah. Huskies or Huskers? <laughs> Huskers. Huskers. Corn Huskers. Mm. Nice, guys. Mm -hmm. <sighs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do this weekend? I went to Vegas this weekend for oh, my did. brother's 40th, yeah. Oh, nice. Have fun. Yeah. Was it a blast? It was a blast. Good it deal. 18 of us went. Oh, wow. We, mm, that's fun. Cool. Yeah. It yeah. was a whirlwind weekend, but... And you can't give us details because what happens been, in Vegas has to stay in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. There was nobody got arrested. Oh, well, that's good. And you all made <laughs> it back. Everybody made it home. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, that's so, cool. No, we had a great time. That's awesome. Did you fly or drive? I flew. Oh, yeah. That's all yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. What did you do this weekend? Mm, we did a barbecue on the river. Oh, nice. Yeah, there was two of them actually in Maybell. It was kind of a river river weekend in Maybell. It was fun. Oh, river weekend or barbecues on the river? Both. All oh. three. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. It was good. Good, good time. Okay. Cody got ready for school. She oh, starts yeah. preschool today. Today's her first day. Mm -hmm. You seem to be handling it well. Have you been drinking? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> All right, so Jesse, tell us about your life. You grew up on a ranch. I did, yeah. And... I grew up on a ranch south of West Cliff, okay. Colorado. Right on. And it was a, uh, it's a big place. It was, it's since been sold by the owner that we worked under, but mm -hmm. my dad was his resident vet and farrier. Oh, nice. nice. So it was kind of a, I guess you'd call it a hobby place for him. He mm -hmm. was a big money guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think it was 46,000 deeded acres. Yeah. And so they they wow. had horses in lot. every discipline and with a very high-end breeding program right. and cattle, buffalo, whole nine yards. So. Wow. And so they sold it off for, like, development for subdivision? Or? No, they sold oh. it. They actually split it in half. I think the Navajo Nation bought the north half and wow. a guy out of Texas about the south half. Oh my oh, that's gosh, cool. that sounds like Yellowstone. <laughs> Is that where they got the idea? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been yeah, back for a long time. But... Yeah. <laughs> and so did you help your dad, like what you said, he's a veterinarian mm -hmm. for the ranch. Did you help him with that? And the Always, work? yeah. Right. That's, that's really where cool. I learned how to shoe. And yeah. So that's how I paid my way through college and all that was shoeing horses. So. Oh, right on. Yeah. Cool deal. Cool. And you went, uh, you went to school at CSU, correct? Yes. How many years were you there for? Let's see. I went from 04 to 08, so I was four years getting my BS, and then took about a year and a half off, went to shoe in full-time, and decided to go back and finish my master's. In, that took about two and a half years. That's awesome. Oh, wow. That's really Congratulations. cool. So I didn't leave until... 2012, I guess. You were there forever. But I took a couple years that's off in the right. meantime, yeah. That's right. good, though. you got to know. And, yeah. and that's how you guys know each other, because that's how I know you is through <clears throat> Casey and Kyle. So Casey, Herod, and Kyle, and you went to college together? No. Well, not really. I I lived with a bunch of guys from Craig. Mm, so okay. you know, George Raftopoulos and sure, Mike Miles. Charchalis and oh. Miles and Grady Wilson and those guys all lived in that same house. Oh, okay. So thanks for clarifying. Then <laughs> so that's, that's how why I you, got yeah. connected to Craig. And, and why it took you so long to finish school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, extra I took a couple degrees out of it. <laughs> Good time. Right on. That's cool. Okay, I wondered what the connection was for yeah. sure. That's awesome. Good group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Cool. And so do you continue then to show ho shoe horses? Parker's got a note here about that, so you must. Yeah, I do shoe on the side okay. a little bit, but it was just, awesome. it's a dangerous a place to put all your eggs, too. Yeah, and exactly. It's yeah. hard on your body, and, right. you know, you will get hurt eventually if you do enough. And Right. So. It just seemed like when I was growing up, there wasn't <clears throat> really anybody around, like in Hayden, that did it. So we did all our own, mm -hmm. or I say we, my uncle and my dad did yeah. ours, and I know there are lots of times that 
my dad would have issues with my horse specifically, who was kind of headstrong. And yeah, there was a couple times she got a rasp in the rear end. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still has issues with the joint in his finger from when he got his finger caught between the rasp and her. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, so. And then what what happened after college? What kind of led you, just kind of take us to the timeline of what got you to Craig um, job-wise? I moved to the Western Slope after college with my now ex-wife. She was from Montrose and... Uh, her dad owns a vet clinic down there, and when she finished vet school, we went to Montrose. And so I was in that part of the country for about six years, and that's how I ended up on the Western Slope, I guess. And in the meantime, the first two years I was in Montrose, I worked for the URA Weed and Pest District up mm -hmm. there, and then took a job with the Forest Service in Paonia as a nice. rangeland specialist. I bet that was fun. It was, yeah. It was a good gig, and that's a neat district up there. It's it's pretty, mm -hmm. yeah. Over half designated wilderness, so we did yeah. most of it horseback, and that's really oh, cool. That is was cool. A, yeah, it was a good way to make a living for sure. Oh yeah, in the summers. Yeah, because you enjoy your job, and then you don't feel like you're really working. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you missed us, <laughs> and you were like, I gotta get to Craig. Yeah. Right. I gotta yeah. get to my buddies. <laughs> so yeah, as things panned out, you know, I just. When I saw this job come available, I knew I had a lot of friends up here, and I always liked the area, and figured I'd give it a shot. Cool. And you're liking it so far? So far, yeah. Yeah. So I think you're a perfect fit. I think you're a perfect fit for our community, and we needed we needed you here. I think it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was good timing for me, and it's, and that's it's why been we a pretty kinda, easy transition, really. Yeah. What brought you in today is, you know, people buy places, and even, we're not just talking about in out of town, in town places too, and they don't know where to start. They don't know where, okay, what kind of weed is this? Where do I even go to? You know, what mm -hmm. what's wrong with my tree? I don't right. even, like the other day when yeah. I called you, you know, mm -hmm. people don't know. So that's why we kind of brought you here to open the horizon and open everyone's eyes and say, oh yeah, call the extension office. They can help you, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, because you guys offer so much. Yeah. And I don't think people realize that. Yep. It's what we're there for, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, the extension agents are, it's kind of their job description is yeah. to help people with that sort of thing and if they don't know the answer they've they've got the resources to figure it out quickly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm kind of in the same boat you know I don't know it all off the top of my head of course but I know a lot of people that know a lot of stuff yeah, yeah and I can yeah. and they can you can even test the soils for sure how does that work well there's little there's soil sample kits if you think there's something going on or you know you're curious as to why the vegetation transitions here or something like that you can come to the office get a, a soil kit and then you go take a sample there's directions there and then send it off to the lab that's like really if your cool. grass isn't growing and stuff yeah. like that mm -hmm. yeah i got at our place we have like strips and then there's parts <clears throat> where it doesn't grow and we think it's probably the dirt from it very well may be yeah excavated the house yeah. and then you know when you get those results back you can a lot of times figure out how to amend that soil and say, you know, we, we need to add an iron, we need to, or it's very acidic, we need to get it basic, oh, something like that. So you okay. can play with the pH of it and they'll tell you what it's low on, what it's high on, that sort of thing, and gotcha. then you can kind of figure it out from there. Okay, I gotta do that then. Yep, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. And thanks for going to look at my client's tree the other day, that was awesome because she wasn't really sure. She knew there was something with it, it didn't look right. Oh yeah. But she's like, I don't know what to do, and I'm like, uh, we got a guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I think Jess Counts is going to go look at it today too to make sure. Oh, right on. She that's agrees awesome. or make sure we're on the right track, so. Cool. And then, so I was up at a client's flip property today, mm -hmm. and there is a uh, Russian olive, and I did a live post about it. Is Russian olive noxious? Yes. Okay, that's I what I thought. I don't feel like that's fair. They are the coolest <laughs> trees ever. They grow easy. You can't kill them. That's why they're <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it's a tree. It's not fair. I feel like... But they start out like shrubs, right? I mean, they can be shrubs, or they could be trees. They can be. They typically turn into trees. Yeah. But they will grow in thickets and take everything else over and, you know, go look at the section where 318 crosses the little snake right there. And it's... It is. It's, it's almost a monoculture. I've never even paid attention, but I guess I will now. But the elk can do like it. 
<laughs> so if you have them on your property, can you leave them or should you get rid of them? You can leave them, especially on private property. You, I mean, okay. there's, I don't think anybody that has the authority to tell you you have to get rid of them necessarily okay. unless they become enough of an issue that, you know, I think ultimately there's, the state can take action on that, but that's not, a, it's not common. Yeah, okay. And as they start, you know, they will spread and they will eventually snuff other so more desirable species out <laughs> and oh, they're thorny and they're, they are, you know, I they're know. not supposed to be there technically. Right. So if you have a, like a healthy tree and then right next to it, a Russian olive starts growing up, could it kill that tree? Not unless it gets, you know, if more propagate around it, oh, okay. yeah, they'll, kind of they can it. crowd it out. Okay. And that's what happens along the waterways with those type of species, Russian olive and tamarisk and those things. They eventually get thick enough that they will snuff out the, the willows and right. okay. buffalo berry and whatever else is growing down there that, that you want. Yeah. yeah. And I think the tamarisk look neat, too. I like the look of them, but I guess that's about yeah, it. Yeah, they're pretty when they turn pink, yeah. <laughs> unless you're a weed manager. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you drive past properties and are just like, oh, my gosh. All the time, yeah. <laughs> what is that weed doing in there? <laughs> like, knock, knock. Can, mm-hmm. I, can, I, can I get your weed out? Yeah, I get caught staring at road ditches all the time. <laughs> <laughs> People think you're looking for a body and you're not. <laughs> you're looking at weeds. That's, that's why I'm on the other side of the yellow line. <laughs> right. So kind of take us through what, if a rancher was to call you and say, hey, I just got this property. I don't know what these weeds are. Do you guys go out there? and then Yeah, we can do site visits for site sure. Vid- and then kind of, do you, can you spray for them and take care of them for the rancher? Do they need, you know, what it, or you what's that refer- process? Or you just refer refer them to somebody or yeah and most often I guess since I've uh, this is my first season here but most often what happens is they'll bring in a sample they just come to the office with a handful of plants say what is this why do I have it how do I kill it that's type awesome. of thing and but a lot of times I mean we can go do site visits and we've got a partnership program set up through HPP right now where we apply for a grant what's through, HPP um, Habitat Partnership Program. Oh, okay. And the way that works is an HPP uh, deals mostly with larger landowners and agricultural producers, you know, so their threshold with this partnership is 160 or more acres that you have to own to qualify for this partnership. And they'll cover half of the chemical cost and the county will do the application at a discounted rate and it's set up for a three-year partnership to where you know we'll come out and hit it three years in a row and try to get it mitigated well enough that then they feel comfortable taking it over okay and this is the third year on so the last round of the partnerships we're in right now Mm -hmm. so we'll you know pick a new batch of landowners and Mm -hmm. start again next year that's cool very cool Okay. And we don't, you know, we can't get to all of them, of sure. course. So we kind of pick what we think we can tackle, which is typically, I think we're doing 13 right now. Wow, okay, in our area. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, all okay. within Moffat County. Yeah, very cool. Okay. And wouldn't, wouldn't you agree that <clears throat> weeds are something you want to stay on top of? It's not something... No question. Yeah, yeah, it's not something, oh, every five years we'll see how it's going. You might every, as well not do it. Yeah, if you're going to do it every five spread, years. Because right? yeah. you won't get 100% kill on anything in one year. And the seeds is Work the comes. biggest right. problem. Yeah. Right. So as by the time it's a big enough problem that you notice it and want to do something about it, there's probably generations of seeds sitting in the soil. Oh, man. And most okay. of those species, that. you know, the... The seed soil life is anywhere from two to as much as 15 or 20 years. Really? So it just goes dormant? Yeah, those seeds will hit the ground and they'll stay there till the conditions are right. And So like the conditions like for this year when we had a really moist year and stuff. Yeah, it was a great year. Yeah, so a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Maybe. Mm -hmm. A lot of weeds too. That haven't been around for a while maybe thought, okay. They've been around, but maybe not in the numbers we saw. Right, right. And is there a different um, spring weeds, fall re- weeds, when to spray? You know, because oh, some weeds yeah. you want to spray in the fall, right? Yeah, there are some. And, yeah, there's a huge variance in 
when different species emerge and what conditions are right for them and difference between annuals and perennials typically and there's a lot of like winter annuals in this country because there's a it's short growing season it's pretty cool yeah so so i didn't know there was perennials and annuals in weeds oh, like yeah. in flowers mm-hmm. oh wow okay yep all of the you know your koshas and russian thistle cheat grass a lot of the big weeds around here are annuals. Foxtail is something we saw on our ranch more this year than we have saw in it the previous. It was a wetter year. Yeah, yeah. 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 we saw a lot more foxtail this year. Okay. Yeah, we had foxtail pop up in a gravel pit that has never been noted, never been there. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Do you do that, so, then all the county stuff you... Yeah, we do all the county, county road right of ways. Okay. We'd like to give a big shout out to E&L Signs for being our sponsor of this podcast. E&L Signs serves Western Colorado and Eastern Utah for all your screen printing and vehicle lettering needs. With over 30 years' experience, Ed and Lori will get it done for you. So remember, E&L Signs. So, <laughs> just taking yeah, we care do of all like, of the, all the county. county road right of ways, gravel pits. Those are, you know, the county owned properties are our first priority. And there's, the county owns a lot of property down around the airport, mm-hmm. golf course, oh, Loudy, okay. all of that stuff right. too. And, the grounds crew takes, you know, they do all the turf work and stuff like that, but that's, those are the, the big areas that the county owns for sure. And then we try to set up partnerships with the BLM and Working whoever else is interested in, yeah, large scale land management. So the leafy spurge thing that the BLM was worried about, what was it last year? On that grows on the do I have the right thing that grows on the side of the river? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, are you helping mitigate that, or did, did yeah, I'm somebody... involved with that group. the The Yampa River Leafy Spurge Project is the the name of the group that is largely a a bunch of volunteers that are river enthusiasts, and a lot of them have backgrounds in ecology and land management and that sort of thing. And so they know what they're doing. They're they know what not they're out doing. There. Yeah, they're they're, it's it. not a. Yeah. yeah, they're not winging it, but they've. Most of them are retired now, I guess, and you know they spend a lot of time on the river and realized sure. what a problem it was and wanted to do something about it. And so. We're kind of in the stage of trying to figure out, how to manage it on the scale. The biggest problem with that species is, it's it's really hard to kill in any setting. And the chemicals that are the most effective on it, you can't use in that vicinity to water, especially. Gotcha. Yeah. And so any anywhere that there's a like a really shallow water table or it's intermittently flooded or anything like that, you can't you can't put toward on there. Mm. And it's also it's hard on trees, it's hard on willows, it's hard on all the native stuff that you need there to choke out right. that weed or to at least compete with it. And so there's kind of a yeah, there's a conundrum there with yeah. what to use, but there's a new chemical supposedly coming down the pipe that may have an aquatic label that may be pretty effective on it, but it's not labeled yet. So it's still in the process of yeah, going through the going EPA through and yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting... Well, I hadn't heard about it until one of the guys at the BLM <clears throat> was telling me about it a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. And then just this summer in Grand Junction in the neighborhoods uh, one of the weed companies down there was telling me about it in this one lawn that there was some leafy spurge. Is there different types of it, or is that the same thing that we're seeing on the river? It's the same thing, yeah. Leafy oh, spurge wow. is leafy it's, spurge. Okay. There's there's different types of spurges, but mm-hmm. leafy spurge, I've not seen any other spurges here. Okay. Yeah, so apparently it can be like in your in your lawn then too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll grow. Think about that. It likes water, but it, mm-hmm. it'll grow in upland sites too. There's other areas around where it's it's taken hold for sure. And then you mentioned about gravel pits and stuff. When uh, Rick Murr did our uh, landscaping last year, and he got <clears throat> gravel, you know, for the the little crushed rock or whatever, I think from from Maybell Enterprises um, Anson's. Anyway, um, there were like le- weeds that were growing up in it this year, and I thought, well, what the heck is the problem? And he said that there would be seeds like in the gravel sure. mm-hmm. and like just I didn't grow up on a ranch so I didn't realize that that's how it worked I just figured like gravel gets washed somewhere and shows up at your house mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so that's why we treat we treat our pits every single year so we're not spreading gravel out 
Yeah. With All it. over the county, yeah, spread yeah. the wheat seed with it. Yeah. Well, we've got to get it sprayed. We sprayed some stuff on it that, you know, you can buy at Walmart, which I'm sure is not very strong. Better well. than nothing. <laughs> Better yeah. than nothing, yeah. <laughs> but I'll be doing it again next year. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yep. When, say we get customers come in and we're looking at rancher ranches, what are some dominant weeds that they should be looking for? I know it's going to be different in different areas of Craig. Sure. But what is a very dominant weed that, you know, if you see this, it needs to be treated? You know, what would you say? The ones, I would say the biggest problem species we have here, Leafy Spurge would make that list for sure. Um, bulbous bluegrass is one that a lot of guys fight in hay fields, especially dryland hay fields, where they kind of took a native community tipped it up and tried to get it into a grass alfalfa mix or something like that. And it's, okay. it's a species that does really well here for whatever reason. reason. And it's, yeah, there's a lot of guys that really battle that in their hay. Um, any of the knapweeds, there's a lot of Russian knapweed, spotted knapweed around. White top's a big one here. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had um, some white top on our place, yep. yeah. And, and then you kind of get into the, you know, foxtails and things like that. There's, toad flax there's hound's tongue is another one yeah. that's nasty because it it spreads so easily we and then what's of... up in the fore is it <clears throat> forgive me is it larkspur is that what can kill the cows yeah yeah larkspur is, it's pretty... one of the toxic species but it's technically native is it mm -hmm. oh. so it's not one that you know in my time at the forest service or even in this position it's we don't have the money and with the forest service you know you weren't really allowed to kill native species you were supposed to go after the invasive non-native species yeah. but that's only deadly to cattle correct it's not nearly as toxic to sheep that's what i thought it can be but not that they have to i don't i don't like we used to run herds of sheep in front of cattle that yeah were they do that swing here in there yep. and try mm -hmm. and knock it down because mm -hmm. it really doesn't bother the sheep you mentioned toad flax. So I got this funny story. So we, I grew up in town in Hayden, but we kept our horses out on acreage. Mm -hmm. So I was out feeding my horse and stuff, and I saw this toad flax, and it looked like a wild snapdragon. And I'm like, this is really cool. I should take this back to the house and plant it in the flower bed. Mm -hmm. So I did. Yeah, and it, of course, took over, mm -hmm. and I thought they were so cool because it looked like a snapdragon. <laughs> then I found out it was a noxious weed, and my parents, I think, finally just got rid of it like three or four years ago. <laughs> So, you know, that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's how a lot of so, the weeds whoops. got started <laughs> as escape ornamentals that yeah, were brought over. Yeah, they look really pretty. Yeah. Eurasia and whatever. Exactly, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and now, you know, and I think, like you said, the gravel pits, it gets on your, a seed gets on your shoe, you go in your garden, you know, yep. that's, is that how easy it's Absolutely. moved? Yeah. Vehicles and animals are big propagators. Especially with things like hound's tongue that, you know, they've yeah. got those little burrs on them. That those little hitchhikers, they are the yeah. worst during hunting season. Mm -hmm. They are, they're terrible. Because then your husband. Your shoelaces are full of them. Yep. And Gunner dogs gets are full them. of them. Yep. Gunner gets them yep. in his hair. It goes yeah. in the washer, then it goes in the dryer, and then it's all stuck to everything. <laughs> yeah. yep. Then it's in a sock. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're awesome. That's great. So you don't, like, take all that off before you put the stuff in the I do, oh. but there's a certain husband named Kyle Lyons. That, oh, that he doesn't. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's like yeah. the Oscar King that leaves his bank pins and his shirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't do anything What about like you, that, Jess? Right? Nope. No. Okay. I empty pockets. my pockets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do my own laundry, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so tell us about the current situation. Well, or, or I guess starting with... Was this an unusual year for mosquitoes? You know, it's kind of a hot point for you. It's, it was a bad year for mosquitoes, or a good year, I guess, depending on how you look at yeah, it. That if you're the mosquito, it was a good year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of standing water for the first half of the summer, and, right. you know, we, we don't have the budget to treat the whole county, of course, so right. we try to keep it within a couple of miles of the highly populated areas, Craig and Maybell, predominantly. Right. Just because that's what the program can afford. And, right. But with the river out of the banks for as long as it was, and then it was mm -hmm. cool and rainy. and Yeah, yeah we didn't get summer until, could, like, July. Yeah, you could mm -hmm. throw a rock from puddle to puddle for a couple months there. And right. So there was a lot of them that got out, but, you know, we did the best we could. And Yeah, I thought you guys did great. And, I think yeah. it, in my experience, at least, from the difference within the treatment zone to 
a few miles outside of the treatment zone, there was certainly a noticeable difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you'll never get them all, but. Right, right. We we didn't have them bad out at our place at all, I didn't think. So. We <clears throat> didn't have water and had them at our place. It was mm -hmm. crazy. It was crazy. And, I, yeah, John has been there for years, and he said this is the worst the mosquitoes have been ever. Yeah. Hmm. So we were just lucky. May and June was a, it was a tough year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tough Going months, forward, sorry. on what year, on what years like that? What can people do at their houses to help? Uh, you know, is there's, there anything? You know, there's some barrier sprays and things like that that you can put in your shrubs in your yard. Uh, there's a product called Tempo that you can lay down. That'll it's a contact thing. So if they land in there within a week or two of treatment, depending on how much you water and what the weather does and stuff, it'll it'll get most of them. So you can kind of beat it down that way. And then there's little handheld foggers and things that you can buy that help. Right. Citronella candle, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But those I, those little foggers do help a little bit. Okay, They're, okay. They don't throw enough to go on a very big scale, I guess, but you can... But if you're going to have a party or something. Yeah, around your deck, yard, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And they're designed to run off of products that you can buy, you know, over the counter anywhere, so... So, like, at Walmart or whatever, sure. do you need to go to Snyder and Counts, or...? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. It depends Just, on what you're, yeah, after, what you're looking I for. Guess. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. And so then the West Nile mm -hmm. thing, was that, was that new then for this year because we saw so many mosquitoes as far as having it here? Not necessarily. The... The way that test works is you you trap, we set up mosquito traps in areas all over our treatment zone to try to get as broad of a of a catch as we can. Right. And then we separate them by species because certain species of mosquitoes are That's way more me. efficient vectors of West Nile than others. So we pull those out and then you there's a process that you've got to jam them all in a, you know, a little test tube and mush them down and you put them in a buffer solution and then run them through this machine and it just kind of tells you what sort of concentration of the virus that they're, is crazy. Yeah, they're carrying. Is. And so the only, the only test that was of any concern was down at South Beach pretty early on. <laughs> gotcha. And, you know, we hit South Beach pretty hard for a few weeks after we got that test and they went down drastically and stayed there so okay. every That's week good. since it's been where we want it you know right right we live out north by fortification so okay. you guys are always running out there mm -hmm. you know in the evening and stuff and yeah for sure so yeah i was glad to see everything go back down to where it was yeah. comfortable anyway yeah. Yeah. and it's something that you know it's always going to be floating around oh, but yeah. it's just a matter of well, I how think concentrated it, was, it is. Right. When that came out, I got a hold of you and was like, do we West Nile our horses? You mm -hmm. know, like, so when that's popping up, you need to watch and take care of your sure. animals and put spray mm -hmm. on you and keep your mm -hmm. kids sprayed up. and Right. Yeah, yeah, just minimize the risk, which you should do anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That that risk is always there. Yeah. Yeah, whether it's here or Mesa County. And or regardless wherever. of, yeah. yeah, what that test shows mm -hmm. at that area it's you know there's going to be mosquitoes that have it in them so yeah well that's why they have the stuff with deet right because that the deet stuff is the spray is the one that i think so it's yeah, yeah. it's a an effective repellent for sure yeah. yeah so on the bug side so if you had <clears throat> weird bugs just catch them bring them into you you'll help <laughs> yeah determine what yeah. they do and... it's not my strong suit <laughs> But yeah, exactly. It's been a steep learning curve on the bug side for yeah. sure. But well, if some, if we'll, you know, we'll figure out what. Yeah, it is. exactly. Yeah. If something's yeah. in your garden eating your leaves, mm -hmm. let's figure it out. Right. Yeah. Or your trees or whatever. And yeah. there's, you know, yeah, there's some common ones that we that we see a fair amount. But what are those? The answer is aphids. This year have been the big one that uh -huh. a lot of people have been concerned about, and there's been a lot of gall flies, and there's been. And I don't know, I don't have anything to compare it to, so I don't know if it was worse because of the moisture or not, but gotcha. maybe it's just just common. I hate I don't horse know. flies. I do too. And they hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. Deer flies, yeah. They the hurt. deer flies, oh, yeah. The hurt. little elm seed bugs. Yep. We don't have those here, I mm -hmm. guess. They have them in, Mesa County, in parts of Mesa County. And my daughter-in-law was showing me, this is what an elm seed bug looks like. It's the weirdest little thing. Because at first I thought she was talking about the box elder bug, mm -hmm. which we have here and are yeah. annoying as heck. 
and they're they're just a little weird brown bug with like a spot on them or something but i don't think i've ever seen them here yeah i haven't had one come into yeah. the office i would guess we've probably got them just if they're in mesa county yeah, yeah they're probably here gotcha but and yeah i mean there's there's probably 10 bugs that are defoliators of some kind that are prominent enough here to have issues especially in ornamental trees and things like that or gardens and stuff but the treatments are pretty similar you know there again there's a lot of insecticides that are labeled for that sort of thing and Right. So it's it's not a problem that you can't get rid of. Right. Well, and whether you want to try to tackle it yourself, or we've got a couple of good bug guys in town that sure. mm-hmm. can spray and kill it. And mm-hmm. So, because I don't like to see any of that, even a spider, I'm just like, Neh. yeah, don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about? Do you have any information on that? Um, is it alga, al- algae? That is like killing a, the dogs and stuff. Oh, the blue green algae. Yeah, what? I don't know a lot about it. In all honesty, I've never, I've never. Yeah, because that's new kind of everywhere. Did I miss this? What is? What's the deal? It's in ponds and stuff. And yeah, it's like, like oh, oh yeah. yeah. You showed me something on that last week. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've seen it on the news and that sort of thing, but I don't really, I don't know anything about it. I don't have any experience with it. So we don't yeah. have it here then, probably. Not that I know of. Not this. Yeah. Yeah, but just kind of pay attention and. But, That's yeah, that crazy. doesn't mean we don't have it here. Yeah, right. I, I mean, we very well may. I don't know. Right. I haven't seen it. Oh, good. But okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, what else? What else you got? What else you want to Are we forgetting anything? Any well, different so. programs at the Extension Office you want to bring up? Not really. Not that I you can, can think of. You can test water, too, right? Yeah, there's water test kits there. Yeah, and can test your well, what's in your pond, Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Just come in again and get the test kit. And Mm -hmm. then where do you guys send it off to? There's a a lab in Hastings, Nebraska. Oh, right on. Right on. (laughs) Of course. I don't know if that's, I don't know where the the soil and water samples go because the the extension agents deal with all that stuff. Sending that off. The lab that that I use is in Hastings, like for noxious weeds or poisonous weeds and things like that. Like I've had a couple people bring in uh, some arrow grass to get sampled because it's a, it's a toxic species that does pretty well in the hay fields around here. So that just guys that were wanting to make sure the toxicity level was safe to put the hay up and that sort of thing. Oh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good though. I didn't even think about you guys being able to do water and stuff. I thought that was a... Mm-hmm. I guess city of Craig thing. I didn't. There's a lot of things that I didn't realize that yeah. the extension office does. And you guys are open five days a week or four? Four. Four days. What yeah, time? Yeah, the is? office is open eight to four, Monday through Thursday. Thursday. So mm-hmm. any questions, just always stop by, bring it in. Do you guys have like a weed book too that people could take if they need it or? Yeah, we've got it? little. We've got little books that we can hand out that have the noxious species weed species in Colorado and what list they're on whether it's a B or C, C. Mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a priority list mm-hmm. or they could use the Google yeah and, Google. See if it <laughs> yeah. Is, and then come in and go okay this is what I have this, this picture right here mm-hmm. and you can be like yeah that's sure a good one that's awesome one. yeah cool right on well thanks a million for coming in today yeah you, know, you bet super it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah thanks we did good. too we'd like to give a big shout out to ENL science for being our sponsor of this podcast e l Signs serves Western Colorado and Eastern Utah for all your screen printing and vehicle lettering needs. With over 30 years experience, Ed and Laura will get it done for you. So remember, e l Signs.